repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump part 14. A comparison with another steam pump and some fine tweaks to the mechanical setup of this one. If you've been watching this series you will realise that the pump on the right hand side is the one I've been working on and the pump on the left hand side is one that was built by my friend Don English. The difference is this pump runs really well. Thanks to my multiple air outlet reservoir tank I can run more than one steam engine from the airline. The one on the right has been supplied with more air than the one on the left. When I turn up the air pressure to the left hand engine it runs more or less the same, just a bit faster. I think it's time to compare the internal mechanism of these two pumps to see why both pumps run entirely differently. This pump that Don made is not really built to the plan, there are quite a few alterations. One thing that hasn't been altered is the diameter of the shuttle piston, which is half an inch. And the centre part of the shuttle piston is machined down to 3 sixteenths of an inch. Unlike the shuttle piston on the other engine, which is 3 eighths of an inch diameter, machined down to quarter of an inch in the middle. Also, there seems to be quite a lot of play in the valve itself. To take the pump down further, I need to remove the oil feed. Here are the slide valve ports and you can clearly see machining marks, but the pump works very smoothly and perfectly. The shuttle piston valve on the other engine is exactly like this one, if you look how close it is to the edge of the ports. On the other pump I thought that this was wrong, but no, it was me who was wrong. This pump is quite heavily modified, the left hand valve is much thinner than the right hand valve. That's because the primary valve spindle is in the centre of the block, not offset like on the one I'm working on. And the top part is like this. I think Don was just messing around when he made this pump. You can clearly see the positions of the valves are offset over to one side because the main valve spindle is in the centre. And whilst I'm oiling these valves, you can see that they move very easily. Yet when the engine is running, they seal perfectly against the block. I've had two or three of these pumps that Don's made and they've all been different. I really do think he likes to experiment. And quite rightly so, Don is an excellent model engineer and he tries things out just to see what happens. The south of 12 inch pump that feeds the water into the Castle V6 boiler is a horizontal one. And the water chest valves had to be extensively modified for this to happen. Now I'm going to do an AB comparison between the port face of Don's pump, which is this one, and the port face of the other pump that I've remachined. This is from another episode, and the arrows show where the steamways go. And as I showed in the episode before the steam test, the top steamway was almost completely blocked, but it's not now. Now that I know that there are differences between the pump that I'm working on and the one made by Don English, I'm going to bolt Don's pump back together. On the steam pumps that Don makes, he often uses this method using long pieces of brass hexagon to hold the steam chest and water chest parts together. Because the threads are long, you can really tighten up the parts. Over now to the pump that was in a really sorry state when I received it to repair it, and now it's running better than it did, but it's not right yet. I was pleased that it still functioned during the steam test, so all the coefficients of linear expansion are okay, nothing stiffening up or seizing up. When I feed the pump with high air pressure or steam pressure, it's not running right. Something needs to be done about this. Even though I've tried this many times before, I'm adjusting the position of the valve, but it's all to no avail. Here's a direct comparison of both the engines running. On Don's pump, the way the valve is driven is heavily modified from the drawing. And also, in the past on this pump on the right hand side, someone's had the smart idea to modify the way the block drives the valve. Here I'm having a feel at the exhaust pressure from both valves, and it's actually very similar. One problem that I've had with this engine on the right hand side is that the mechanism has been stiff right from the start. Once again, I need to partially dismantle the pump in order to fix this valve block. It's not right at all. This looks to me like a bit of a bodge done by someone who didn't build the pump but tried to repair it in the past. 
there's a piece of steel tube silver soldered in the block, and it's too close a tolerance fit on the threaded shaft. Analyzing the mechanism, it is most important that the two long pieces of steel bar that go through the piston block, the fulcrum, and the valve block are only fixed on the fulcrum, not at each end. The fulcrum is the bit that hangs down from the cylinder on the special fitting. You can see here that I've modified the valve block. I drilled the hole a good bit bigger than it was, and I ground away the excess tubing at both sides of the valve block, and now it looks like this. This mechanism is still not right. Periodically it just stiffens up for no apparent reason. Here I'm making sure that this bolt with a lock nut on it that drives the mechanical lubricator doesn't go all the way through and lock up the drive bar. Here I've applied my spanner to the fulcrum and this is the only place where the two drive bars need to be locked in position. If I was rebuilding this pump or if I'd built this pump from the beginning I would have used phosphor bronze bushes on all the moving parts. This is steel against steel, never a good idea. The part of the shaft that goes through the block that's connected to the piston has a groove in the middle, and an allen bolt with a specially shaped end stops this from moving around. This part must be free to rotate. The whole thing feels so much better now. Originally the allen bolt at the piston rod end was tightened into the groove, and after dismantling it, that's just what I did, I tightened it into the groove. Only slightly, but obviously a little bit too much. Here I'm refitting the bolt that drives the mechanical lubricator, and I've tightened the bolt onto the drive shaft, so when I move the piston, it doesn't feel right. I redid this part of the job by backing off the bolt one turn and then tightening the lock nut. Suddenly the mechanism felt a lot better. And the pump is running much better. No longer is it just oscillating around in the middle, it's still going full length at both ends with high pressure or low pressure air. The interesting thing is, now when I adjust the lock nuts which operate the valve, it's not quite as critical. When I apply some finger pressure to either end of the valve, the pump behaves very differently. And from my experience, that's what's supposed to happen with these pumps. But with this pump, it didn't do that until I made these modifications. And that is it. As far as I'm concerned, the job is finished. I cannot improve this pump any further. Just one final test to make sure it still pumps the water. To my relief, I was very pleased to find out that yes, it pumped the water without stopping and I'm squeezing the end of the pipe considerably at this point. This is an attempt to simulate the pressure that the water would be at if it was connected to a check valve on a boiler and feeding the water into the boiler against steam pressure. What I'm doing with my right hand is adjusting the air pressure to the pump and it works even slowly with very little air pressure. I thought it would be a good idea to temporarily fit a tap on the end of the pipe so I didn't have to squeeze the pipe. But unfortunately, when I closed the tap, the extreme water pressure just blew the pipe out of the water chest. All I need to do now is just run the engine to drain the water out of the water chest, remove the pump from the wooden mounting that I made and lay it on its side so the mechanical lubricator drains. I've put the lid from the mechanical lubricator and one or two other bits and pieces that came with the pump in a plastic bag and it's now ready to post back to the owner. This has been an interesting job and I've actually learnt something so it was worth doing it. It's the first time I've worked on anything quite as bad as this pump. But now equilibrium has been restored to the universe and it should work fine from now on. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.